The BYU Cougars and UCF Knights are two of the furthest flung schools when it comes to locations in the Big 12 Conference, but they're getting together on the field in Orlando on Saturday. What's going to happen when the Knights and the Cougars get together? Well, good thing you asked because we're talking about it in a crossover edition of Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF your first listen and or view of the day. And obviously a big thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us here on both of these fine podcasts. I am joined by Mike Gittins. He is the host of Locked On UCF. And uh, Mike, uh, you're a newcomer to to the Locked On Network, but... Glad to have you and glad to have a UCF show as part of the rotation now. Uh, yeah, it's been a warm welcome that I've gotten, not only from the Locked On Network, but from UCF fans that are finding our channel. We've been going for a week, Jake. We just broke 100 subscribers over All at right. Locked On UCF. Uh, and so I appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to putting out lots of great co- Locked On content for UCF fans. Now, uh, BYU and UCF obviously are two of the relative newcomers to this league, both of them in their second year. Uh, Both of them have coaches uh, who are who've been in the program for a little while. Gus Malzahn down there in Orlando and obviously Kalani Sataki uh, here in Provo. But I want to start off by asking you, can you give Cougar fans a sense of how UCF has enjoyed their time in the Big 12 to this point? Because I think that there is there's like you see UCF on the schedule for BYU, but they're so far away. They're more than 2,000 miles away down there in Orlando, Florida, when you're a school out here in the mountain time zone. But what's the UCF Big 12 experience been like so far? Well, the proliferation of these super conferences, I think, have made it kind of a weird experience for fans. So yeah. you know, traditionally, the Big 12 was what? It was Oklahoma. It was Texas. They bolted for the SEC, and they reformulated things. But you know, for UCF fans, you've you've got a school that has always had high potential. This is a, a great fan base. They're passionate. They're young. They're young in their culture, but they uh, don't lack in passion for their for their team for their knights. Now, in 2017, UCF went undefeated and they kicked the crap out of Auburn in a bowl game. And uh, you know, a lot of fans felt like we had a a national title mm-hmm. kind of team. And to not have a shot at a national title simply because of the conference that you're in, it, it, it underscored the need for college football to evolve. So their experience so far in the Big 12, you know, it's been both a blessing and a little underwhelming, obviously. If you're watching what's going on at UCF right now, uh, Gus Malzahn is absolutely under fire. I had people in my comments yesterday saying, you know, you're crazy. He's got to go. It's We're ready to move on. This guy failed with K.J. Jefferson. Um, yeah. But they're not wrong. Mm-hmm. They're not wrong. Frustration is high. And, you know, coming to the Big 12, I think, has only raised the expectations that UCF fans have of what their program should be in competing with the powers, the traditional powers of college football, Jake. OK, so uh, I can say that BYU might be uh, one of the programs that UCF can blame for the lack that they didn't have that access in 2017, because many people will recall BYU won a national title in 1984. Mm. and. After that, the powers that be in college football so said that's never happening again. We're not letting a team of that ilk ever win a national title. And it's been 40 years. Uh, 2024 is the 40-year anniversary of BYU winning that national title. And speaking from the BYU perspective, I think Cougar fans, amidst a 7-0 start to the season, which has absolutely surpassed all expectations at this point. I'm, I'm sure you got plenty of questions that we'll get to momentarily about this, but I'll just insert this, that BYU, 40 years after winning that national title, the fact that the door is now back open for them to have a chance to win a title once again, I think Cougar fans couldn't be happier about anything more than that, having just the, at least the opportunity out there of having that door open to win a national title once again. Absolutely. And BYU, when you think about BYU, you think about those teams that those one off teams that are are good and not having access to the national title game because of, of, of where they've been viewed. It's it's a disservice to college football uh, this year. BYU fans again, who have been in my mentions very graciously, by the way, I should add, Jake, uh, over on on our channel. And, you know, they've said it. They, they they've said, look, um, you know, don't sleep on this team. You guys are sleeping on this team. And you know, I go to me, I go to multiple media days every year, 
And yeah. the bias that exists in the media toward the traditional powers and how they, you know, and I should, I'm saying they, but I should be saying we because I'm there, overlook teams like BYU. It's it's stunning. So here's what they do. And if you've never been to a media days, let me, let me paint this out for you. They give you a list to vote for preseason all Big 12 or all SEC. And on the list, there are a bunch of names that nobody knows. <laughs> And you got to pick from like 18 players to pick the like top four DBs in the conference. And the names that get picked are always those teams at the that are always at the top because they're the most recognizable names. So it gives the impression to fans that look, BYU, who do they have? Well, they've got great players, right? Those guys just aren't getting recognition until seven, eight games into the season. You're like, oh, they had this guy. Well, he was good the whole time. <laughs> The media yeah. just never recognized him, right? And I think that BYU and UCF share that in common. Well, and you're right, because here's the thing. You look at it. We're going to talk about R.J. Harvey here in a moment. Mm -hmm. He's one of the best. I, I would say he's top three in this Big 12 conference. But to the lay Big 12 fan, do they know who R.J. RJ Harvey is? UCF fans know who he is, obviously, because he's yeah. the for this team. But I'm telling you, people know Ollie Gordon's name. They know Devin Neal's name at Kansas. They don't know R.J. Harvey's name, but they should. And and to your point, I'll admit, I, I've been to Big 12 Media Days, the, so the, the obviously the two that the BYU's been a part of so far. I've had to use my Phil Steele uh, college football Bible and other methods mm -hmm. to get a feel for, okay, yeah. okay cornerback, who am I going to list here at like fourth, fourth team cornerback? But you're right. You learn throughout the season. I guess it's our job in the media as we move forward here as we take on a bigger role, I guess, in the media as we grow up, quote unquote, in the media. I guess we need to be a little more about, hey, there might be some guys outside of the, the powers that be that we may want to pay attention to. Absolutely. I think that it's imperative for college football that the media does their job correctly in recognizing guys. And yeah, look, uh, the BYU fans came in and they said, do your homework on our team. And yeah. th they're absolutely right. They're absolutely right. Uh, it, it's, you know, no, from our position in the media, it's hard to watch everything. Yes. Only 24 hours in a day. Good God. If I watch every team in the big 12, I would never get any sleep. Um, and so, uh, you know, we do things like this, especially on locked on, you know, to draw on the knowledge of the people who do cover those teams and they tell us where to look and they say, Hey, look, don't sleep. You know, when, when you call me, Jake, and you say, Mike, look, don't sleep on this guy, right? I go back to UCF fans and to educate them on who BYU is. And, and like I said, BYU and UCF have had kind of like, I think, a little brother kind of thing going on in college football where they've been overlooked, even when they're good. A time for that is over. Uh, you know, I spoke with uh, our guy, Drake. And, yeah. you know, we talked about the possibility of the Big 12 getting multiple teams into the playoff. BYU is at the top of that list right now with Iowa State. Now, beyond them, look, UCF's not getting into the 12-team playoff this year. But, uh, you know, you've got Colorado sitting there. You've got Kansas State sitting there. And, and I think that, the, you know, the, the media – should recognize what those teams bring to the table. Personally, I think this committee would love to have Dion in Colorado in there. They might be in an advantageous situation where they win out with only two losses and they don't have to play in the Big 12 title game. Mm -hmm. You know, you're sitting there and you don't have to w risk that third loss. I, I think Colorado gets in. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, you know, UCF, they're looking to be in a more advantageous situation in the future as far as the playoff concern. Unfortunately, this year just did not go the way that they planned. Uh, but you're looking at BYU, and, and they're in prime position right now if they handle business. I think even a one-loss BYU should be a lock to make the 12-team playoff. Well, that's what Cougar fans are hoping for. But you talk about the fact that UCF yeah, may not be in their, the cards for them to, to be in the playoff this year. Could they play spoiler? And that's what we got to talk about coming up next, Mike. Yes. We got to talk about this matchup on the field. We got some burning questions for one another in terms of because these two schools, as I mentioned, Pro Provo, Utah is pretty far away from Orlando, Florida. We're mm -hmm. going to learn about both the Knights and the Cougars, and we'll get into that momentary as this crossover edition of Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF rolls on right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. 
Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel is here for you guys in terms of your sports betting needs because they are truly America's number one sports book. They're a proud uh, partner of ours here on the Locked On Podcast Network. And more importantly, you can start the season with a big return with our friends at FanDuel right now. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. It's as simple as that, my friends. $200 bonus bets. All you got to do is place that first $5 bet with our friends at FanDuel. The best part is when you're in the middle of a game and you got a hunch about something, you're like, hey, I want to check that live line. You can check out the latest stats. View live play by play and so much more on the same page where you're placing your bets. You believe that that line swung a little bit in favor of UCF this week with our friends at FanDuel? Well, you can still take advantage of that today by going to FanDuel.com and get started. Once again, that $200 in bonus bets guaranteed with just a $5 bet. Take advantage of it today. It's all courtesy of your friends over at FanDuel as they truly are America's number one sports book. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at the Locked On Big 12 podcast. Mike and I are part of the Locked On Big 12 squad show. You'll actually see that uh, by the time this show comes out. It'll be coming out, you know, a little bit later on in the day. Always a fun time to sit down. Mike, it was your first experience with the Locked On Big 12 squad this week, wasn't it? It was. It was my first experience. A wild time over there. Uh, a lot of great guys. Uh, so I appreciated uh, being able to uh, have community with them. And, and, and again, let fans see a little bit of Every fan base in a single podcast for the entire conference is pretty amazing. Well, see, and I had so Cougar fans are a pretty buttoned up bunch, and I had one not too long ago, and so they obviously post that long time. Big twelve, like, I feel like every one of these guys, including you're talking about myself, like you just let your hair down essentially on that show. I'm like, that's exactly what it is. It's our chance to kind of bust loose and just have some fun. Uh, yeah, look, and uh, it, the fun that we're having is really reflective of, I think, the fun that we're going to see in the Big 12 here going mm -hmm. down the stretch. Uh, there are There's a battle going on at the top, man, and it's exciting. And so BYU and, and, and UCF play this weekend. UCF can play the role of spoiler, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, BYU can cement why they belong in the conversation for one of the top teams in the nation, uh, despite how the record has turned out, beating – UCF this weekend for BYU is 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 a solid win. I, I don't think it should be overlooked because of UCF's record right now. Well, and Jake Resloff said it himself. This is the best three and four team in the country, and I, I think he's I, he's accurate in saying that. So I, I got some burning questions from the BYU perspective. I'm going to lob at you. So I'll lob one at you, Mike, and you can lob one back at me. So we'll kind of go back and forth on this uh, snake draft style. But uh, my first one for you is BYU gave up 269 yards rushing last week to Oklahoma State and Ollie mm -hmm. Gore the second. I mentioned the name R.J. Harvey just a little bit earlier on in today's show. Uh, let's put it this way. UCF runs it like in a service academy team. We're talking the armies, yeah. the air forces, the navies of the world. I've got a big concern that BYU can find themselves in a world of hurt if they can't shore up their run defense. Uh, should Cougar fans be concerned about that? Uh, they should absolutely be concerned about that. Now, look, uh, I know that UCF started the season off with you know a couple of cupcakes. They racked up a lot of yards there. And then over the next three games, it didn't look so great. But at the end of the day, um, when you look at rush defense in the Big 12, right, uh, the Cyclones, uh, you know, they're, they were giving up a little bit more on the ground. And what you should be concerned about is the combination of Ja'Curry Brown and R.J. Harvey creates a really dynamic rushing attack. Now, B BYU can be uh, – uh, they can be stout. They're in the top half of the conference in rush defense. However – Ja'Curry Brown is a really good runner. 13 rushes for 154 yards. Obviously, uh, uh, R.J. Harvey put up on just under 200 yards last Saturday. You sh you, if The way to beat by BYU for UCF is to keep the ball out of Rhett's last hands and keep them on the sideline. You do that with a solid run game, Jake, and you just run the football, man. Uh, you got to win time of possession by a pretty large margin, and uh, they feel like they've got the running game to do that. I think that they do. We'll see. I, I am curious to see how the Cougars battle that because uh, Ollie Gordon had had a pretty, frankly, awful season up until that matchup last week. He busts loose for 100 yards, and I mentioned Oklahoma State just absolutely carved BYU, BYU up in the run game. And Oklahoma State's a good running team. I consider UCF to be a great running team. Yeah, I, I do think, but they – they have to be. <laughs> now, um, they've got a really good wide receiver in Kobe Hudson there that they're going to have to try to get involved here, but it's going to start with establishing the run. And then what you want Ja'Curry Brown to do is you want him to be able to hit the big pass over the top 
when they need it. Now, he didn't do that versus Iowa State, and it ended up costing them. As a matter of fact, on passes of 20 or yard, more yards down the field, he connected on exactly zero of them. You can't do that this weekend versus BYU. You've got to at least have the threat of the deep pass there. Or, you know, I, the spread here was odd to me. Yeah. When I looked at the spread on this game, I thought BYU would be favored a little bit more than they are. Uh, um, and I don't, I don't understand it. I, I think that BYU is in better position to win this game than the spread says. It, it feels like bait to me. I know we did the FanDuel read. If you're over on FanDuel, Godspeed to you <laughs> picking this one if you're picking for or against yeah. the spread. Uh, but but look, Jake, uh, at the end of the day, the, the run game is is pretty much all UCF has at this point because you've decided to go with Ja'Curry Brown, which means committing to the run and yeah. then hoping that you can manage your quarterback's arm enough and get enough out of his arm to win the game. Look, BYU fans say, hey, look, the formula is sell out against the run and hope that he can beat you with his arm. I think that that's going to be an effective strategy. We'll see if it works. Yeah, it should be a fun one. Uh, other question I've got for you is obviously UCF fans, they've got a very large fan base. I, I was stunned when I looked up the enrollment for the university. It's one of the biggest public universities in the yes. country. Uh, it's going to have a massive alumni base given time. Like you mentioned, they're still relatively young as compared to some of their uh, conference mates at BYU among those, but I look at UCF as a kind of a sleeping giant, as it were, because it feels like in time they could become an absolute leviathan when it comes to NIL, just having an alumni base and, and just a fan support that could really be unrivaled. Is that is that coming along to the level that I, you would hope as members of the Big 12 Conference? Yeah, I think it is. And, you know, you know what will help it come along? a little bit more is winning uh look nothing helps financial support more than winning jake uh so <laughs> you can speak directly to that this season. <laughs> so uh you know what they're looking for is they're looking for the coach of the future okay i'm not sure they feel like it's gus malzan right now so to open up those pockets a little bit more and and this is true of any program you know this right if you don't win games, the purse strings are going to start to tighten because giving more money to somebody who's mismanaging money is de definitely not the answer. Uh, giving more <laughs> recruits to a coach who may not be getting the most out of players is not the answer. There are questions. You had K.J. Jefferson come in here, and that didn't work out. It left a very sour taste in a lot of fans and alumni and people who support the program's mouths. And they're thinking, hey, we went out. We paid this guy all this money. And he's we're midseason. He's not playing. He's benched. Yeah. Welcome to the new college football, though, Jake. Right. This is yeah. the pros. Well, it's, it's terrible. And, OK, I, I can speak directly to that from BYU's perspective. Jake Retzloff was 0-4 as a starter last year. Yep. Mike, and he's 7-0 as a starter this year. Who's the real Jake Retzloff? I, I think he's somewhere in between those two, uh, quite honestly. But it's been a marvelous season to this point. But as you mentioned, he was in, uh, in most people, he was like the guy that everybody loved to kick because he was down last year when he was 0 4 as a starter. And yeah. now he's 7 0. He's the toast of the town in Provo, Utah. So it, it, you're right. It's a new era of football. KJ Jefferson, trust me, Cougar fans know that guy well because he came with Arkansas to Provo, Utah, and absolutely kicked the crap out of BYU on their home turf. And it's frankly stunning to see him being benched, I think, in most Cougar fans' eyes. Yeah, you know, uh, my question was going to be about Retzlaff, as, as a matter of fact. Yeah. You're talking about K.J. Jefferson coming in there and, and doing what he did. And then you talk about a guy like Retzlaff who started 0-4 last year. He comes in, and they seem to have found something in him, which yeah. – you know, credit uh, uh, to BYU. Sometimes you can be a little trigger happy when it comes to moving on from a guy. He showed enough that they decided to stick with him and, and look where it's going now. Uh, but, you know, can UCF slow down Retzlav enough in this game with his arm? He's a dynamic deep ball thrower. Before we started recording, you talked about how this offense for BYU is predicated on being able to connect on that deep ball. I... I have questions about whether this UCF secondary can slow Restlav rest down with his arm enough uh, to make this interesting going into the fourth quarter. Well, and that that's a great question because here's the thing. Aaron Roderick, his whole philosophy is he likes to, to soften up the front with the run game, and that's still a work in progress in many respects because BYU's running backs, they just kind of been – it's been a mass unit, quite honestly. One guy comes in for a week and he's injured, mm. and the next guy kind of steps up. 
They have their star running back in LJ Martin back, and he had a career d- a day last week against Oklahoma State, so that was a positive sign. But the whole offense is predicated on really softening up the front with the run game. And then when you just feel like, hey, they may run it again, they go play action, they go deep on you. And the one thing quarterbacks in this BYU offense have to be able to do is be able to connect on the deep ball. Zach Wilson, Jaron Hall, guys in the NFL in this modern day, they have all proven that at BYU. And Jake Retzloff is the kind of the next in the long line of those guys. And his deep ball, it's been fairly accurate all season long. Well, you know what helps that deep ball is, is that he's only under pressure on like 20% of his dropbacks, <laughs> which I, I don't know if the listeners understand how good that is, but that's really good in today's college football. Yeah. On average, it's somewhere between 26 and 28%. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're doing really terrible if you're in the 30s. Uh, I think that if you're going to let him sit back there and have an 80% protection rate, you're going to have a really hard time stopping BYU on offense in this one. And yeah, and that's a credit to this offensive line of BYU. They're a fairly veteran group. They're two tackles, Caleb Etienne at left tackle and Braden Kime, uh, twin towers. Both of them standing more than taller than six foot eight, Mike. Uh, they they are a formidable bunch up front. And you're you're right. They have kept Jake clean. Uh really his jersey only gets dirty when he when he's part of the QB run game out there for BYU. But yeah, it's it's been a really, really good job overall by this offensive line. It's actually had some injuries of uh, concerns of its own. Connor Pay, who's been a stalwart for them. He's not going to play in this game against against UCF because he's got a Jones fracture in his foot. He's uh, recovering from surgery for, on that. But, uh, yeah, the offensive line's done a really, really good job keeping Jake Retzloff upright. Yeah, they have. Now, hold the phone, Jake. <laughs> Last week versus Iowa State, UCF should have had two pick sixes on Rocco back. As a matter of fact, they made his life absolute yeah. hell for half before yeah. they didn't in the second half, and he went wild with Jalen Noel. Uh, but – I think maybe if you can cook up something defensively to throw Retzlaff off for a half, jump out to a lead, and then hold on for dear life, that's probably where BYU needs to live in. I mean, also where UCF needs to live in this one to have a chance at the end. Well, and that's the thing about that. The first half against Oklahoma State, Jake Retzloff kind of had more of what we call bad Jake Retzloff. Where he threw a couple of interceptions and, and looked like he was a little bit rattled. And the second half came back and obviously led them to a, touch, a, a winning touchdown drive in the final minute and change of that game. So it was absolutely thrilling in that respect. But you compare those two halves, it's a different quarterback. And you're right. UCF, if they can get him confused, pick him off a couple of times, and as you mentioned, hold on for dear life, in many respects, that's kind of the formula it feels like Every team's tried to get BYU with this year. Nobody succeeded so far, but Oklahoma State came oh so close to it. Yeah. Uh, Look, UCF gave Iowa State all they wanted. It came down uh, to the last minute. ended up being a three-point game. I see this game happening somewhere in the vein of that one. Gus Malzahn is good for one of these inexplicable wins. Once a year, man, and and you, we can talk stats and all that stuff, but you know how it goes in these things sometimes. Sometimes throw out the stats and uh, and just understand that uh, you know this is a competitive team, right? Okay. So they may not be where they want to be right now, but uh, UCF has they have the tools in the toolbox, I think, to make this competitive. Okay, Mike, I got a stat for you that's going to blow your mind when it comes right. to when playing in the Sunshine State down there in Florida, and we will get to that. We'll get some predictions, some final thoughts as you wrap up this edition, a crossover edition of Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Good to have Prize Picks back with us here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The best thing about Prize Picks, my friends, is it rewards you for your sports fandom. That's my favorite part about playing on Prize Picks. All you got to do is you just go and select over under on a player's stats that they have on the site or on their app. And as simple as that, you select the, the over under and then you cash in your winnings. Download the app today and have some fun with it. It's a really, really simple way to do it. You can win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. Think about that. Four players, you get their correct over under on them, you can cash in your money. The best part is you can sign up today and get $50 instantly when you play just five bucks. It's as simple as that. You don't even win to receive that $50 bonus. It's guaranteed just simply by putting that five dollars up with our friends at FanDuel. Price picks is the best way to win real money this football season. Where which players are going off, which ones aren't. If you feel like you've got a beat on all of that, take advantage of it today. You make your picks in less than 60 seconds and turn your sports opinions into real money all season long with our friends at Price Picks. So check it out today my friends uh, download the app today and use the promo code locked on college for that $50 instant bonus after you play your first $5 lineup once again promo code locked on college when you download the price picks app today and get that $50 instantly when you place your first $5 lineup setup and I would also check it out my friends uh 
check out their online site. If you don't really want to go on the app, you don't want to have it on your phone, the website's just as good. Check it out today. It's all courtesy of your friends at Price Picks. Run your game. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF your first listen and or view of the day. Both of these shows available wherever you get your podcasts, also available on YouTube. All right, uh, Mike Gittens, let's talk about a BYU and UCF kind of tell the tape on this. Now, BYU hasn't played in Florida often, Mike, but their record when they have played in the Sunshine State is a healthy 2-8 and eight all time. 2-8. <laughs> and eight. Yes. Yeah, I'm shocked at that. I was almost speechless when you said that. Two and eight. Uh, I I don't know that I believe much in the geography curse. Okay. Uh, now look, there's something to be said for traveling across multiple time zones, and you know, having a good, I think, road routine is very important for most teams. Yeah. Um, so you know, coaches have their routines to keep their uh their teams on on track, right? Yeah. Um, one of the most interesting things, I, <laughs> I don't know if this is a weird story to tell, but the Ravens came to a hotel I used to work. I used to do event technology. And, okay. and, when, and when teams would come in, we would set up screens and projectors and stuff for them. And one of the things that Harbaugh did that I thought was interesting, Jake, is he wanted his players to think as little as possible the night before the game. Yes. And so – there was a weird route from the rooms to the conference center where they were doing meetings and it's, and, and it was kind of confusing. So they spent like tens of thousands of dollars to set up this like tent tunnel <laughs> and they put arrows on the ground to like direct the guys. And I was just like, this is it. These are grown men that can't get from one building to another. And it was like, we don't want them to, th we don't want them to think about where they're going. This right. Is, this is the most Harbaugh thing I have ever heard. Of. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. And so, Yo, I coordinated this whole thing and they wanted the lights in the tent. And it, it, it was, I could believe they pissed, paid like $60,000 to set this thing up for like one night to get them from there to the meal room, to the meeting yeah. rooms. Um, but look, you know, is BYU a good team on the road? This is, this is the question I think that yeah. I have. Can they go down here, handle business, get into a good routine and, and beat a team that quite honestly, they should be. They should win this game. I think we're going to learn a lot about the the gumption of this team, to use that term, because you're right. They, they've won on the road this year. They went to SMU, and SMU is killing everybody all of a sudden, but they beat SMU in Dallas in the second game of the season and held SMU without a touchdown. Uh, that win, in retrospect, looks absolutely brilliant for BYU. They So they've proven they can win on the road here, Mike, but they haven't had to go to the two time zones, and that's something that BYU... Yeah. In their independent era, funny enough, the 13 years before they joined the Big 12, those two wins I mentioned all time in the state of Florida came in that independent era. It's 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 relatively recent that BYU's ever had any success playing out there on the eastern uh, seaboard and the eastern time zone. So they've got a lot to prove. And I think they've got a pretty good formula, as you mentioned, for they travel a day earlier. So they're traveling down uh, today, Thursday, when most people hear and or watch this. Uh, they will already be there in Florida getting set up shop to acclimatize a little bit better uh, to Florida. But they they know what they're up against here. And the biggest thing is now, okay, we're seeing in the Big Ten, the three time zone travel has become a big issue for the West Coast Big Ten schools. They're already talking about it less than a half season into their uh, tenure in that league well guess what by you can say hey we know exactly what you guys are dealing with but suck it up anyways and yeah. that, i think it's gotta be the mentality for byu it doesn't matter where you're playing this is your new reality you're gonna be going to cincinnati you're gonna be going to west virginia they went to west virginia last year and got absolutely smoked speaking of byu they've got to be able to prove they can be big boys and go out there and win a game on the eastern seaboard because if they can't do that I would essentially say that BYU is always going to be playing second fiddle to somebody else in the league because that's not – if you're going to be a true conference contender, you have to be able to win on the road no matter where it's at. Yeah, and that's why I say if they win this game, it can't be overlooked because going into the bounce house and getting a yeah. win is going to be – it's going to be an accomplishment. Yeah. Right. Um, It's not going to be something – I don't think that you should be able to write it off and say, oh, well, they're not good this year. Going down there to play and get a win is a tough proposition for any team. Uh, and despite how the season is going, it will be rocking on Saturday down there in Orlando. I promise you. Uh, so I, I agree with you. It's, it's it's about a mentality. Good teams go on the road and they get big wins. Uh, so you look around college football. It was funny. I was watching college game day and I, 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 
I watched how people let those nerds on game day convince them that <laughs> Texas was going to run all over Georgia, and Georgia went in into Austin and put belt to butt mm -hmm. for a whole half, man. And and and, and they had no sh they had no shot. Yeah. But they've been used to doing that. And, and I think it, it's going to be fun to watch teams like BYU develop that sort of reputation for being able to go in to places like UCF. They, they just get overlooked in terms of the environment down there. It's absolutely raucous, man. And it's going to be fun to watch. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Okay. Uh, I, we got our predictions. We'll get that. We got to wrap this up pretty quick. Mike, there are a few universities I can say I have been in a stadium at the 50 yard line of with nobody else around, but UCF. Okay. One of them in 2016, uh, UCF was coming off. I believe that it was that 0 and 12 season. My wife and I happened to be in Orlando uh, on a vacation that year down there in the Orlando area. And we had a free day. We didn't really have anything going on. And my wife knows I'm a college football junkie. And I'm like, you know what? Let's drive over to UCF and check out. the <laughs> bounce. We, wa we went over gates were wide open. Mike, I walked in, walked out to the 50 yard line, looked around. There was nobody around that literally I had the run of the place. And it's one of the few places I can say I have been at the 50 yard line of a stadium like that with literally nobody else around me. Wow. Uh, yeah. At the 50 yard line with nobody else around you? Nobody, nobody. no security, nothing. I, I walked right in, walked out to the 50 yard line. Nobody stopped me one bit. There's so. nothing like standing out there, too, isn't right. it? Like, it's no, there's no feeling like that in college football. Pretty cool. All right. So, Mike, give me your prediction. What are you thinking about Saturday for this one? Oh, man, I've gone back and forth. <laughs> I've gone back and forth on this one. I, I think I told our listeners over on Locked On UCF that I was going to – I picked them last week to get the upset. They came oh so close. Yes. This week, you know, it's at home, and I feel like they can do it. I do think that there's a route here, and it goes through R.J. Harvey and, and Ja'Curry Brown's legs. But I have questions about whether – UCF can get the type of turnovers they got versus Iowa State to hang in this one. Can they turn Rutz Laugh over? Um, mm -hmm. And the answer to that question is yes. Okay. I think that this, I still think BYU makes the playoff, but I think that UCF pulls the upset here. Okay. I'm going to give a score prediction. I'm going 31 28. Okay. And an absolute Big 12 thriller. Uh, now, this is no disrespect to BYU. I think they're a fantastic team. Uh, however, stuff happens, man, and I think that it may happen in this one. Uh, I I don't I don't think there are, there are Cougar fans out there I think who share very similar thoughts to you. I trust me, my my mentions all week on social yeah. media on you, my YouTube comments indicate as such. I've got a similar score in mind, but I'm going to flip it on its head. I've got BYU 28, UCF 25. Why I picked 25, Ooh. don't ask me, but I think it's a close one. I think it goes right down to the stretch. And I think BYU squeaks it out in the end and, and gets to 8-0. Yeah, I, I like that pick. Um, ultimately, who's going to who's going to have the ball last? Who's going to yeah. make that one more play? And, and I believe that. I think that uh, UCF, they have what it takes on the ground to make this happen in and if their defense can contribute like they did last week they should have had two pick sixes last week the kid let go of one oh, right before he brutal. Decided Jackson did. yeah so brutal uh but uh i i i think that that's what the same type of game we're going to see here the big 12 man it's some exciting football is being played this year i think the country is taking notice and i think that continues on saturday well mike excited to have locked on ucf as part of the lineup here where can everybody find your fine work Go on over to YouTube, uh, type in Locked On UCF, and hit that subscribe button. We crossed 100 subscribers in less than seven days, and we're looking to cross 500 subscribers here before the end of the month. In the okay. next seven days, get a, help get us there, man. I, I, even even though I picked UCF, BYU people, help, help a brother out, man. Go on over there and hit subscribe. I, I'm just going to advocate Cougar fans. They love uh, representing the Big 12, but more importantly, they love sh uh, sharing the love when it comes to the Big 12 overall. I can tell you, you will have Cougar fans who I know actually live in the Orlando area and they will be at this game because I know them personally, Mike. They will be following that show if they're not already. I, I will make it happen myself if I have to. Yeah, they've been very, very engaging and respectful so far, and I love it. I, I'm looking forward to it. We encourage dissent over at Locked On UCF, so share your opinions even if you don't agree. All right. Well, if you want to find all things BYU, check out Locked On Cougars, wherever you get your podcasts, just like Locked On UCF. Hit the subscribe button. Uh, make sure you join us every single like, comment, like the show, do all that stuff to help spread the word of what we're doing here on the Locked On Podcast Network. But Mike, thanks as always. Look forward to doing many more of these with you down the line. Thanks for having me, Jake. 
All right, that's going to do it for this crossover edition of Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF. Thank you once again for making it your first view and or listen of the day. And as always, thank you to all of you who are everydayers with us right here on Locked On Cougars and Locked On UCF.